As far as I know, there's only one time that I've heard of a dwarf squirrel. One time. Uh, but as I said, year after year, raccoon after raccoon after raccoon. Um, the sea grapes are also, um, they have a tendency, if a branch gets damaged, snaps, falls, hits the ground, as long as that branch is still alive, there is a tendency for that branch to re-root, you know, clone itself, re-root, and make another tree. Uh, the leaves of the sea grapes are also very famous, um, uh, historically. Um, uh, the Native Americans and the first settlers used to use them uh, for a wide variety. Visors, bands, paper plates, paper, uh, sea grape notes and letters were, were, were very common back in the day, very well known. Um, I think that's about it on the sea grapes. This tree right here in the middle, uh, well-known species, famous species, cool species, I love them all. Uh, this is called Gumbo Limbo. It's just fun to say, everybody limbo. Um, at first glance, you might see a little bit of peeling, a little bit of flaking. You might think, oh no, there's something wrong with this tree. Wrong, perfectly fine, perfectly healthy. Um, the Gumbo Limbo has a couple of nicknames. Uh, it's called the Taurus Tree, which is not a Taurus, it's native. <laughs> uh, it's also called the Fence Tree. Um, the Gumbo Limbo uh, shares a couple of characteristics um, with the sea grapes. Um, uh, salt resistant, salt tolerant, high wind impact. Uh, it, it, it can really take a, a beating. The difference is that sea grape can take a beating but it's very rigid. So at some point, if it takes enough of a beating, it'll just snap and, and break. The gumbo limbo, it's very strong, but it's very pliable, it's very flexible. So it takes a, a beating and instead of uh, standing strong, it will kind of sway with the, uh, the impact, uh, making it that much tougher to actually snap and, and, and break. Uh, Native Americans used to use um, uh, the wood from Gumbo Limbo to make bows and arrows, canoes, paddles, oars. Um, the extracts from Gumbo Limbo are anti-inflammatory. Uh, if you have a wound, an injury, you don't want to get it inflamed or infected, Gumbo Limbo is your best friend. Um, we do have, unfortunately, uh, we do have both poison ivy and poison oak, or poison wood. Um, now here in the park, I can absolutely point out the poison oak. Uh, poison oak is ten times worse than poison ivy. Um, this is the, the, the remedy, the antidote, uh, for brushing up against uh, either one of the two. Also, historically, uh, this was used to treat gout. Um, you can... Uh, extract the chemicals either simply from these are the leaves of the gumbo limbo um, just simply rubbing on the leaves you'll get some of the the oils the Native Americans used to take these and mash these up um, you get a, a stronger more concentrated uh, form of the uh, of the of the the chemical the purest, most concentrated form you can actually tap into the tree, like um, um, like maple. And as I said, that's the purest, most concentrated form of this uh, of this antidote, of this remedy. And uh, yeah, okay. All right. Wrong. <laughs> Both of these are exactly the same species. It just simply that you're looking at two different stages of development. So, um, let's take this one first. This is called booted. And then this is called, ah, don't look at it. It's called bear. <laughs> Cover up. <laughs> look away. <laughs> um, so, um, 
Uh, you've got uh, either sable palm or cabbage palm, same species, that's a different name for, for, uh, for, for two different species. It's kind of rubs me the wrong way. Some people think, oh, you know, one is one species and one is the other. No, they're both the same. Um, furthermore, some people think that one stage of development is one species and the other stage of development is another species. No, they're both the same species. Um, so basically what happens is the tree grows a little bit, then it gets, then it grows these, these, these covers, these boots, these protections, grows a little bit more as it grew, grows, sheds the boots, goes bare, grows a little bit more. Ideally, it's a continual life cycle. However, there are very much so, there are certain individuals that I simply like to call Peter Pan. They don't want to grow up. So, as I said, I've been here a while. Um, these are not the only two individuals, but these two individuals, 100%, I have never, ever, ever seen, and again, I've been here a while. I've never seen this individual bear, and I've never seen that individual booted. Never. <laughs> uh, but again, ideally, it is, a growth cycle, a growth, uh, 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 an ongoing life cycle, an, un uh, an ongoing uh, growth cycle. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you to the state tree of Florida. Um, they are protected. I believe currently they're considered a threatened species. It is 100%, again, it is 100% a federal offense to harm or harass in any way, shape, or form a wild, freestanding sable or cabbage, same thing, um, a, a palmetto tree. Um, back in the day, back in the day, they were, they were highly, highly used for log cabins, very strong, reliable, dependable um, uh, logs uh, were made uh, from these trees. Also, if you've ever had or heard of heart of palm salad, this is where it comes from. There is actually a fruit that grows um, uh, in, in the core, in the center, which is why it's called heart of palm. Um, and it actually used to be believed that there was a method, which I know nothing about, of extracting the heart of the palm from the palm without killing the palm. Nope. <laughs> nope. There are certain methods, certain techniques that do not kill the tree immediately. So this is the one that, oh, well, it's not dead and we got it, so cool. <clears throat> Wrong. You are prolonging. And, and these are living things. These are living organisms. Let's, let's not beat around the bush there. You are prolonging. The, the death you are prolonging the agony um, but uh, as I said um, uh, the, the, the the everyday uh, act of extracting uh, is a thing of the past yes you can go to grocery store stores you know Walmart Publix what have you and still get heart of palm salad there are nurseries and groves that are specifically licensed and certified for the, 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 the propagation, the extraction of heart of palm from, from the tree. It's legal, it's legitimate, it's okay. Enjoy your salad. <laughs> um, another thing to, po to, to point out with any of the species of palmetto trees that pr produce the fruits, some people have these growing on their properties and they think the boots are ugly. I don't see it. Hey, it's nature. Leave nature alone. But um, they think these boots are ugly. So they see these and they rip them off and tear them off. You are stunting the, the growth rate of the tree. So don't do that, obviously. But if you don't care about that, then maybe you'll care about this. These little pockets that the boots produce are nice little cubby holes, nice little hidey holes 
There are loads of different critters, spiders, ants, centipedes, millipedes, maybe little lizards, scorpions. So someone could go yanking away and literally yank this down and have a projectile going right on them of who knows what. So just don't do it. Whether it's you don't care about the tree but you don't want creepy crawlers on you or me personally I just don't want to hurt the tree um I always have to point out those fun little facts about the summit of Campbell uh, so noteworthy to point it out here's your poison wood or poison oak as I, as I mentioned earlier this one right here not this one I'm okay yeah. um 10 times, 10 times worse than poison ivy, as I said. Now, this is native, it's natural, it has its purpose here. So, oh, oh, this is a bad tree. Get rid of it because if you touch it, you hurt. You know, you get hurt, no. No harm, no fall, we know where they are. Just don't touch them. Um, these do produce fruits. The fruits are perfectly fine. They're edible, no problem. You have to get to the fruit. That is, that is the tree's treasure, and it is simply protecting its treasure. Um, but uh, birds, for example, normally the fruits grow like on the top. The so birds just come right back, pick off the fruit. All over, all done. But anything else, if you touch the tree, if you touch the leaves, you're gonna regret it. Immediate, instant, burning, blistering, stinging. I've, I've heard it be equated to taking a hot metal iron and just stabbing yourself with it. Really potent, nasty stuff. Um, so, how you can tell that it's poison wood, um, not every individual reads the textbook, but, um, the clusters of leaves, they normally grow in odd numbers. Uh, so either three, five, or seven. As I said, not every individual reads the textbook. So if you kind of, oh, well, it's two and four. It's like, oh, okay, play with it. No. But normally, the stems themselves, you can see they're very bright. Some are brighter than others. Um, the little antidote that I like to say is, it looks like it's on fire. You touch that, you are going to get burned. Um, you can also see, again, some more than others, the edges have a bit of a curve or a wave to them. They're not straight, they're not flat. Um, so that, that is definitely another um, a key uh, identifiable characteristic um, for, the, uh, uh, for the poison oak. So that's the poison oak. These are trees. They go about maybe 30 to 40 feet high. We have uh, some, some older individuals that it, I believe might have some, some of the fruits growing on them. And then we have some, basically some adults as well. I will absolutely point those out. Um, if you look carefully, we're, we're doing a pretty good job with them. Uh, let me see, where do I see some? If you look, like up there, you'll see a few little clusters of, you know, cute little dainty, tiny leaved vines. Like, right up in this area. Those are called rosary, or, um, those are called rosary pea vines. One of our public enemies, number one. This is one of our non-native invasive species. Um, they, um... Uh, they come from Africa, actually. And oh, we got them over here. Perfect. Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Here we go. Here we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right there. We have some more right there. So here, here's here's a nice set of vines right there. Also. So most vines, what they do is um, they like to grow. Um, like wildfire first and foremost but they really like to grow on the tops on the canopies 
of said environment so that they can um, well what what are the three main ingredients I like to say that plants need to survive bingo hit it on the head the first time the other one is air and water so these guys like to go up on the top so that they can speed up that process of photosynthesis um, as quickly as possible so they do that um, but they're growing and spreading obviously denying the sunlight for all the other trees and plants beneath them killing them off why these guys are so evil <laughs> another thing about the rosary pea vine I hope I see some of these but I haven't recently the seed pods not only are the seed pods fascinating that's also why they're called rosary pea vines the, the seeds on the top are rosary red on the bottom are jet black so that's a little bit that's half of why they're called rosary pea vines the other half is because the seeds themselves are very very hard they're very very tough to crack inside those seeds is the deadliest known form of cyanide on the face of the planet the rosary beautiful pretty warning warning don't bother me you're gonna be sorry so i don't know exactly whom i don't really want to know exactly whom but two einsteins back in the day had an epiphany at two different times so one one individual thought um oh well these are pretty so let's make rosary beads out of them so you have to drill holes through the seeds exposing yourself to the toxins Woohoo! great idea and rosary beads are made out of them we don't do that anymore I haven't been doing that for a long time now Genius number one. Genius number two decided, oh, these are pretty and they're hard. So if you contain them, they rattle. So let's put them in baby rattles. <laughs> so back in the day, there were loads and loads of infant mortality rates. Because what do babies do? They see the rattle. They cr they play with it they crack it open oh look at the pretty thing they put them in their mouth so we don't do that anymore either <laughs> so really fascinating little tree a, a little uh, plant like that, that we have here and that I've been going to for years and years and years don't want to put too much pressure on this individual but that's what's the name of the campus um you can see very distinct unique uh, characteristics of the gumbo limbo uh, first of all all the twists and turns and bends and curvatures of the branches uh, you can see how heavily pitted um, the um, uh, the bark is of uh, uh, of the live oak and that's actually very key um, uh, and, and specific to the uh, to the species um, it doesn't look like much right now, but you can see all of the growth, all of the additional life, the additional uh, plants that are growing on, um, on, this, uh, on the live oak. Um, they can take hold and, and, and take root uh, in all of these little nooks and crannies and, 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 uh, and crevices of the bark. The main additional species that you see at first glance, it looks like wah, wah. doesn't look so hot, doesn't look so good. Perfectly fine, perfectly, uh, perfectly healthy. This species of fern is called resurrection fern. <laughs> Very evil. It's taking a nap. It's dormant right now. It's getting its beauty sleep. And while it's getting its beauty sleep, it's very ugly. <laughs> but um, 
during a high rain, after a high rain, even after a high rain, when it's extremely, extremely damp, moist, and humid, it comes back to life. Right now, it looks like it's dead. It's just getting its ugly sleep right now. Uh, so all of these spring to life, and they're this beautiful, beautiful, vibrant green. So, it's a fascinating process. Right now, you're seeing the ugly side of it, but it's absolutely fascinating nonetheless. Um, the um, uh, the wood uh, from uh, from the uh, from the live oak tree is very strong, very sturdy, very hardy. Uh, sailors used to use these um, uh, to fix, especially the hull of the boat, um, because of all of the. Uh, the twists and bends and curvatures of the branches themselves. Um, you wouldn't have to take the extra time and uh, time, uh, time, effort, and energy to, to to ply the wood to affix to the hull. It's already done. Uh, so fascinating species. I love them all. If if you can't tell, I love them all. 